Coming up, correct technique to test rigidity. Seems firmly in place. And premium S65 muesli with a hint of copper. There's no doubt that this engine spun a bearing or 17. Hello and welcome to another beautiful sunny day in Frankfurt. This is part two of Project Frankfurt, my dream car E92 M3. And in this episode, I fixed the engine with super glue. It's running again. You think I'm lying, don't you? Well, I have video proof. It's possible that I'm lying. That video be old, man. Pretty sure the crankshaft is broken in half. We're gonna need something stronger than super glue here. But in this episode, we're gonna roll this thing inside, put it on my brand new Benpack two post lift, have a proper look underneath, dive into the engine, see if we can find some more funny carnage and perhaps discover what exactly happened here. I also got in touch with the original owner of this car, the guy who bought it brand new, drove it for nine years and 145,000 miles. And I also got in touch with the guy who imported it from the US to Europe. We have some interesting additional info that I want to share with you. But first, we need to get it inside. And as you can see, I don't have four burly men to help me do that. We need to set up a nice and elegant way of dragging broken turds in the dojo. So let's go ahead and do that first. Say aloha to my brand new two post lift from Benpack, Grand Prix, or we can do it the French way, Grand Prix. Also look at the E30, it's stupidly clean. Anyway, that's going to be a separate video where we install it and whatnot. Right now we need to install the small winch that I bought. Disregard that, I was just checking if the cable is long enough. News flash, it's not. I'm thinking to anchor that right over there on the floor. And that way it's in the middle of the two post lift and we can drag stuff in. This is the base plate. I'm going to drill four additional holes here and use anchor bolts to bolt it down to the floor. Mouse traps, cat litter thing. I don't even have a cat. I don't, I don't remember why I bought that. All right, Bob the Builder. There. I need to mark the holes. That's all six of them, nice and tight. Seems firmly in place. I have to figure out all of this. To motor, to battery. Where's the plus? This is the plus. Is that all there is to it? Does it work? Oh yeah, it's not. I gotta lock it. There we go. In. Yes! Does the remote work? Comes with a tiny battery. In. Oh no! Don't tell me the battery is dead. Oh, maybe. Ah, okay. I got it. There was an on button. Let's get the tow hook going. I gotta hook up the battery. Watch out. Angry Alpino over there. All right, so the cable is nine meters long, which ain't enough. Got rope here. Oh, you gotta be. I shall push you, my friend. Push by the tire. Yes. Now we're in business. In. Working. The battery that I'm using is pretty bad. All right, pick your battery. 
Oh yeah, easy. Easy. We are in. That was brilliant. So much easier than pushing the car in. Well deserved break for you. I got a hold of the email of the original owner of the car and obviously he was able to tell me a lot more about it. He bought it brand spanking new back in 2011 and enjoyed it for very, very happy 145,000 miles. He took incredible care of this thing. I mean, you saw the interior in the previous episode. It's immaculate in there. He's done a few mods. M performance steering wheel, ZHP shift knob, and I think the engine has Alpine tune, whatever that is. Other than that, the exterior, he didn't have any big bumps, dents, or accidents, well, apart the last one that totaled it. So majority of the panels in the car are in the original color. Few of them are not, but I'm gonna get to that in a bit. I have a stack of service records, and one thing was popping out constantly. Customer states hit a pothole, and he was smashing rims left and right, and I think every third invoice was like that. You must have great roads in New Jersey. Other than that, I have big ticket items here. I'm not gonna go through every single record, but the rod bearings were done on this engine in 2017 at 82,000 miles. Some shop in New Jersey. They went with OEM bearings treated by VPC, which is not a great call. You wanna use BE bearings or ACL for better clearance. Then throttle actuator on bank one went out at 100,000 miles in 2017, that was replaced. Then valve cover gaskets, spark plugs, coolant in 2018, and brake shoes, pads, or whatever. Oxygen sensors in 2019. Then throttle actuator on bank two went out, that was replaced. And one fuel injector, which is a weird one, normally you replace all of them. And the last big ticket item, clutch kit. This was done in 2019, and right after that, he had that accident. He hit a curb pretty hard to the point that he deployed airbags. That rim was cracked and he broke suspension components, I think control arm or tie rod, so the suspension was messed up as well. And at that point, the car was eight years old, 145,000 miles. It didn't take much to total it because all of these parts are very expensive. It ended up on the auction and that's when Edgar's from Latvia bought it. He wrote me on Instagram and he was the one to share that video with me of the engine running back then. He and his friend fixed it up. They repainted the front bumper. The hood had to be done because it got damaged in transport, this part over here. The rear bumper was repainted, and I wanna say side skirts as well. And upon closer inspection, the paint match isn't 100% perfect, so I might have to do something about it. Under certain angles, you can see some difference, and it's annoying. That rim was not replaced, it was repaired. They welded the crack, and uh, I'm definitely gonna have to replace that because I'm not doing 330 kilometers per hour with cracks, well, welded rims. Then they replaced the airbags, the curtain airbag here, the headliner had to be replaced. And what else? The taillights, they hacked that, whatever that means, to comply with Eurospec. So we're gonna replace that because I want fresh set of taillights. And then they just cleaned up the car and sold it to someone in Germany. When they sold it, it had 145,000 miles on the clock. But I think that shady dealer with that stupid name, Deluxe, whatever, bought it and put 80,000 kilometers on it. Then some Spanish guy bought it because he's in the paperwork of the car right now. And I think he was driving the car back to Spain because he was on export license plates and then the engine locked up. And then he ended up with a Moroccan guy from who I bought it. And if you think about it, essentially I'm the second real custodian of this car, which makes me really happy because now I have complete history of the car and everything that happened with it. And chatting with the original owner was super nice, super nice guy. And he told me this was his favorite car. He thoroughly enjoyed every single mile in it. And that if the accident didn't happen, he would still be driving this car to this very day. And I told him once the car is fixed up, if he wants to come to Frankfurt to reunite with the car, please do so. And he told me he's probably gonna take me up on that. So that's something to look forward to. It was really nice learning all of this because now I know the car didn't have crazy history. It had one loving owner that had a small mishap with the car and after all it went through, it ended up here with me. So now we're gonna get it up in the air and let's have a closer look underneath. Yep. Shh. 
shake test. LSD, baby. Let's start tour de Frankfurt in the back. Tires, not too bad. Look at that M logo, the control arm, that's nice. Original shocks, definitely gonna do that. Ball joints, nothing is ripped, everything looks good. Need to do the brake lines, no one ever does that. This side, the shock is not leaking. Control arms, ball joints, everything looks good. That's surprising for the mileage and age. Sway bar looking good as well. The diff, not leaking. Just need to service it. Original exhaust all the way down. Unmodified, I like that. Not much rust to speak of. Surface rust here and there, but other than that, the chassis, everything else, the body looks good. Transmission that's covered up, can't see nothing. Uh-oh, seeing oil leaks, but that's impossible. I mean, VNWs, they never, ever have oil leaks, but the whole front end is covered with oil. That shock is not leaking, nice beefy caliper. All right, let me get some tools and remove this thing. Put the bolts back in. I think it spuked oil through the front crank seal when the crank broke. I'm thinking these two control arms here were replaced because of the accident. If you look on the other side, they're much dirtier and they used OE parts, DRW Germany. You can see BMW logo scraped off, which is really nice. But other than that, I don't see any other damage. Something small here in the subframe, but that's irrelevant. The chassis leg looks nice and straight, no signs of repairs. So as I was told, the accident was pretty minor, nothing structural or that couldn't be replaced like the control arms. Are you telling me I'm not gonna have to do any suspension work on this car? Yeah, no suspension issues on this car. We'll do the shocks just due to age and maybe along the way we find something else, but it's pretty good. I'm gonna get it all the way down and let's check out the oil filter. Let's see what we're gonna find here. See oil, this means that no one touched the oil filter since the, well, the thing with the engine. Oh, nice and glittery. I can see some copper flakes as well. Oh, we struck gold, boys and girls. See that? That's not something you wanna see in the oil of your engine. That's copper flakes. There's no doubt that this engine spun a bearing or 17. Let me cut that filter open. Metal shaving parade. It's just full with shavings, full. Nice, thick, coppery flakes. Put the cab back on. Don't want to contaminate in the engine. I think now I want to remove vibration dumper and just see how the crank moves. I almost forgot how bad that is. Can we get the pulley off now? Yes. All right. It's the bolts removed. Is it fused to it? Pry bar. Yeah, you can see that I'm moving the entire crankshaft. Okay. Look how much it's scraped there. That there is the crankshaft. And I shouldn't be able to move it like that. You can see that the front crank seal is just wiped out. And that's where all of this oil came from. I'm pretty sure that's RTV. Yep, 
RTV. Why is there RTV all over the front crank seal? What were they doing? Look at that. That's RTV. No entiendo. Okay, RTV on the front crank seal. Can't really explain that. But given how much play we have in the crankshaft, we can move it up and down. That means that it's either broken, at least the front part of it, so we can move it, or the main bearings are completely wiped out. They don't exist, and you can just jiggle the crankshaft as much as you want. It's possible that it spun main bearings. These engines have a problem with that. And when that happens, you can throw away the whole block. It's gonna overheat, it's gonna deform, you can't save it. It's also possible that it spun rod bearings and it overheated so badly that it broke the crank and then it wiped out the main bearings as well. And the oil just came straight out of the front crank seal. Either way, I don't think we're gonna be able to save this engine. But now, just for giggles, let's remove spark plugs and look inside the engines. Maybe we see something funny in there as well. Cracked piston, you know? Ow. Oh, snail! He's still in there! If I were French, I'd eat this now. But I'm not, so I'm not going to. Run, my friend, run! I set him loose. The S65 in all of its glory. Too bad this one is broken. What kind of weird looking coil is this? Ooh. Oh, loose. Normally I would vacuum before I take the spark plugs out, but what's the point? Not terrible. No, that one is loose as well. Camera going in. Scored. Oh, that's a good one. How about the next one? Hello. This one is scored as well. It's a nice line, man. Yeah. Loose. So those guys that did the spark plugs. What's the deal here? You don't use the torque wrench? Ah, TDC. It had no oil pressure when it's pump bearings, so the cylinders got damaged as well. All right, I've seen enough. I think it's safe to say it's time to start looking for a used engine. There was a small possibility that the crankshaft broke in that engine for whatever reason, then it's gonna spit the oil out through the front crank seal, but at the same time, the crankshaft sensor is gonna kick in and shut the engine before you can do any major damage, but given how much metal shavings we have in the oil, the play in the crankshaft, there's no way we can save that block. We need a different engine that we're going to rebuild completely before we pop it in. That being said, do not expect videos on this car anytime soon. We have way too many unfinished projects around here, so we need to finish some of them first before we can start working on this one. Project Marbay E30-320i, it's pretty much done. That's going to be a final episode that's going to come out towards the end of the week or the next one. It looks magnificent. Then Project Chicago Alpina B7, I'm stuck waiting on bumpers for seven weeks now. I'm gonna explain why in that episode, but that should come hopefully next week as well. And then that's going to be a final episode on that project. And then I'm going to sell it. And with that money, I'm going to finance this one. Then what else we have around here? Project Hovde. Didn't touch that car in over a year now, which is absolutely unacceptable. We need to do the timing chain guides, vanos, road bearings, just a nice thorough service of the engine, suspension. And I think we're going to do all of that before this one, just because it deserves it. And I bought it way before this one. Then Project Cars Rue, E32 750IL, it's still puffing blue smoke. We did valve stem seals, which were definitely bad, but I think that the valve guides are worn and we need to remove heads and have them refurbished. So more work on that engine. What else? X5, we need to do valve stem seals on that engine. I have all of the parts sitting in that basket over there. And I think that video is gonna come in a couple of weeks because if the bumpers for the Alpina don't arrive in time, I'm gonna start working on that. Doesn't need a ton of work, just needs a good service of the engine. Then it can pass tooth inspection and it's gonna be back on the road. Project Marseille E31-850i and Project Castellon E21-323i. Now that we have the two post lift finally installed, we can make some progress there as well. 
I'm gonna take those two cars for a dyno run first, see what kind of power they're making. And then we're gonna put them on the two post lift and drop the engine and gearbox out. And then the body, the chassis is going off to Poland where they're going to be completely repainted back to original color. Right now, those cars are just sitting collecting dust. So might as well get that done first before we start working on the suspension and the engine because it's gonna take a few months at least to paint them and remove a little bit of rust on the E21. Did I miss anything else? I don't think so. There's another E39 Touring outside, but that's a story for another day. E46 Project Cologne, it's sitting inside. That's doing well. I'm daily driving Project Rally right now because I love it and it's more comfortable than the E46, but that's doing great as well. My E39 M5, that's back at home doing great as well. I think that'll do it for this episode. Just a quick update on all of the projects and I wanted to make sure I didn't miss anything here and that it looks good underneath, which it does. Very nice, clean car. And once we do the engine, all of the mechanical stuff, replace the rims back to silver. It's going to be a beautiful, beautiful car. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon with Project Mar Bay. I can't believe how good that car turned out. It looks spotless, immaculate. You're gonna love it. Ciao.